Thank you to have you on the show once again. This is Mobile Last Event, the host of Live Well Lived by Mobile Last Event. Uh, Live Well Lived by Mobile Last Event focus on self development and personal improvement podcast with the location of expert and professionals who are adept in the topics of personal development and self improvement. It's a such a pleasure to have Mark Nelson on the show today. Now, Mark Nelson is the lead scientific researcher at Fellow One Research. Welcome to the show with me, Mark Nelson. Thank you for having me on. Right. Thank you once again, Mark, for coming to the show. Now, I'm looking forward to your expertise on today's show. Mark, you'll be talking more, right, on body types, right? And that's what I want to be talking about today. Looking forward to what you have for my audience. Now, considering each body type, how can a person customize their exercise and nutrition for the result they want? Well, first, they need to understand what their, uh, their actual body type is. And we're talking about scientific body types. So... Um, I think that m most of your audience has probably heard about the, uh, the three body types, the endomorph, ectomorph, the mesomorph, which most people don't realize are based on no science whatsoever. Uh, they are just arbitrary, subjective shapes that are essentially useless. Uh, if, you, if you try and identify yourself as one or the other, there is no science that helps you understand why you are a pear or an apple or whatever. Uh, so, and it, the same is really true for the kibby body types or the triangle body types or the hormone body types. None of it's really based on any science whatsoever. There's no scientific data. We are the only body types in existence. Um, so, uh, in terms of our body types, so that you can understand your diet and exercise what would be best for your body type first you've got to understand how mainstream science and, and medical doctors define body type so there are three body type standards and all three are not accurate um, the first standard that mainstream science and medical doctors use is the standard scientific human body anatomy book body type one and that is the body type that you would find in any scientifically approved human body anatomy book. It's the image in your mind's eye of the human body with all the muscles and muscle mass fully developed. And if you go and see your doctor, that is the image that you are being judged by, that you are being uh, uh, rated as either normal or not. And the problem with that image is that it's a scientific genetic fact that any part of the human body can be underdeveloped to whatever degree. So Right now, that body type standard, the, the body type one, does not take into account the fact that ge genetically, you can have a part of your body underdeveloped, including muscle or muscle mass. The second standard is the body mass index, uh, which became the standard in 1985, but it's been around since, since the 1800s. But in terms of the BMI, it is not accurate because it does not take into account skinny fat. Skinny fat is one of these newer terms that science is just starting to recognize. But if you're someone like me, who's dealt with skinny fat my entire life, I first noticed it on my body when I was about eight. Um, and I have dealt with it ever since. And because I was always a active kid and was well within my safe BMI, no one really ever paid much attention to it. But skinny fat, if you are well within your safe BMI and you have skinny fat on your body, including normal weight obesity, it will directly affect your BMI calculation. But the BMI calculation does not take skinny fat into consideration relative to the actual cal calculation. Excuse me. The other reason why the BMI is not accurate is because it's possible to have excess muscle on your body. If you think of somebody like Dwayne Johnson, the rock, that dude is all muscle and he has more muscle on, on his body uh, that would put him most likely into the overweight or obese category of his BMI, yet he most certainly is not overweight or uh, obese. Uh, so that is the second standard, the BMI that, and why it's not accurate. The third standard is the basal metabolic rate. Uh, that is the BMR. It is the number of calories daily that your body requires just to function. And it is not accurate because it does not take into account skinny fat. So it's a, 
uh, science recognizes that one pound of muscle mass burns six calories daily, but one pound of skinny fat or fat only burns two, two, three calories. So if you have skinny fat on your body where there should be muscle and muscle mass, then you are dealing with uh, a, uh, a uh, reduced metabolic rate. It will directly negatively affect your metabolism. So those are the three mainstream science and medical doctors by type standards and why they are not accurate. So relative to diet and exercise, getting back to your, uh, to your original question, we have to understand what our scientific body type is. So science right now looks at diet in terms of low carb as being the best diet. And the science is now becoming more clear on this. So um, you can really do any diet in terms of low carb. Um, but we look at the blue zone Mediterranean diet because there's a lot of science that that backs that up. Um, but what diet works best for you is relative to your body type. So it's, it's, it's about first understanding what your scientific body type is. And the same is true with exercise. We don't necessarily push a, a specific exercise, albeit walking is actually the best exercise according to science. Um, and I'm happy to go into all of that in more detail, but I'm gonna sort of pause here and see if I'm making sense. Did I lose you? Sure, that's okay. Thank you, Mark, for that um, insight. So I want us to talk about uh, body types and what it reveals about our health, right? I just wanted to expand more on that. Now we talk about um, the apple, the pear, the hard glass, and the inverted triangle and the ruler, right? So um, what, what do they reveal about our health? Well, so let's actually, um, again, all of those, there is no science relative to those body types. So we don't really know what any of that says in, in terms of our health, other than how much fat or skinny fat you have on your body relative to muscle and muscle mass. So our body type science looks at it in terms of skinny fat versus muscle and muscle mass, which is ge genetics. So our body types are um, the, the four body types. And they we came to those body types because we were looking at a logical, reasonable way of understanding the human body, how it is structured, and what happens in terms of genetics if your body is underdeveloped, which again is a scientific fact that any part of the human body can be underdeveloped. So every human body has 26 vertebrae. There are seven cervical, 12 thoracic, five lumbar, one, cox, or one sacrum, and one coccyx, excuse me. We broke down our body types scientifically relative to those 26 vertebrae. So a body type one is just a, a body type one. It's, it, it's that same body type one image that you would see in any scientifically approved human body anatomy book. And it's the image that it, when you go and see your doctor that you are being judged by in terms of quote unquote normal. A body type two would have one to eight vertebrae and muscle and muscle mass underdeveloped. Body type three would have nine to 17 and the body type four would have 18 to 26. So in terms of how body type shape helps us understand our health, if we are dealing with a body type two, three, or four, which has skinny fat on it where there should be muscle and muscle mass, we know scientifically that that directly negatively affects our metabolism and posture. Why? We know that every vertebra in the back houses a specific set of muscles. If any of those muscles are underdeveloped, that will directly affect our posture, which directly affects our shape. And because we know that, we know that if the muscle and muscle mass is underdeveloped, something has to exist in place of what should be there in terms of muscle and muscle mass. And what exists in place of it is skinny fat. Skinny fat is, again, a newer term that has only been around for the last decade or so. But it is defined as cellulite, thin fat, loose skin, saggy skin, crepey skin, or normal weight obesity. 
if you have skinny fat on your body, when you are within your safe BMI weight range, then again, it directly negatively affects your posture and your metabolism, no less. So in terms of your health and the shape of your body, if you think of it like, you know, so in terms of your BMR and the number of calories daily, if you have skinny fat on your body and you are relying on the standard Mifflin or Harris Benedict BMRs, they don't calculate in skinny fat. So if you're someone like me, who was born in a biotype four, who had skinny fat all over his body, uh, especially when I was younger, and I've worked hard to put muscle and, and muscle mass on my body and you know, get rid of that skinny fat. But when I had a bunch of skinny fat on my body, and, and, and even now, it directly negatively affected my posture, which affected my shape, which affected my metabolism, excuse me, which in the end will directly affect your diet and your exercise. So we have plenty of folks who have used our scientific weight loss diary who have done great and they have done the work and they've lost the weight and they've gotten within their safe BMI weight range, yet they don't look like a body type one, like their doctor and everyone else says that they do once they are are within their safe BMI. Why don't they? And how does that affect their health? Well, they don't because they have skinny fat on their body where they should have muscle and muscle mass. And it directly affects their health because normal weight obesity carries many of the same risks as obesity. So we'll sort of pause here and see if that is making sense and, and if I need to clarify anything. Mm -hmm. All right, Mark. Now, really, I want us to talk about the body size, diversity, and acceptance, right? Uh, many elements of the society promote the idea of a perfect body. Now, we body shame ourselves and others because of what the society had message to us, right? Through the, the media, the beauty um, industry, and the outdated notions of health and wellness or health and fitness. I beg your pardon. So, how can we get it right? Of course, you and I know that, uh, especially I have instances uh, of friends who are over 40, who are uh, right, and they don't have, you know, a man walk up to them or propose to them, right, because of their shape, because of their size, or you're overweight, you're too obese, right, and then, you know, it becomes an issue. So how can we get it right? Oh, that's a great question. And that is a huge worry on our end because social media is a driver of this nonsense, right? You have all these folks up on social media who are filtering images and photoshopping images, which leaves young people who don't know any better because our body type science has only been around now since 2003. Um, especially young people see these fake images and they try and hold themselves to these unrealistic, impossible standards that their body that their genetics will not allow them to meet. And so that then leads them to unhealthy, unsafe diets and exercises and such, which leads to unhealth in general, which is why we have a global health crisis in general, physically, mentally, and emotionally. And the only way that we, ever, that, that we overcome all of this nonsense and get ourselves back to a state of health is we understand things through science. And that's why our scientific biotypes are so important because we are the only scientific biotypes in existence. And our biotypes help you scientifically understand why your body is the shape that it is. It helps you accept the fact that this is my body. It's, it is genetics. And I have to accept my body for what it is. I can't just go out and try some crazy diet or some crazy exercise, pop pills, whatever, hoping to get to some unrealistic, impossible standard because I've seen it up on social media or in, in the media itself or in some Hollywood movie, whatever. So what's driving all this is ignorance. And it's not that the, the average person doesn't want to understand. It's just that it's far too easy on, on the internet and in general for folks to find false 
and misleading information and then run with that and say, you know what, I'm going to look like that body type. So I'm going to starve myself when starving your, 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 your body really only leads to more problems and it doesn't help with weight loss. Um, so the way that we solve this is, is, is through science. You can go up on our website at fellowone.com and learn about our scientific body types, learn about the scientific weight loss program. You can take our scientific biotype quiz. You can use our scientific weight loss program. Uh, there's a basic and an advanced. Along with the advanced program, you get access to our science-based diet, exercise, and lifestyle team so that you can ask questions. And we will respond with real science-based answers. We use uh, Hi Moz DA and Google SERP one links so that we know that we're getting the latest science. Because science is always evolving. New science comes forward and we have to change and evolve and adapt with that new science so that we can understand scientifically why our body is the shape that it is what our real scientific body type is, and what the best diet, exercise, and lifestyle is for our specific body type. Once we figure that out, we are working on experimental proprietary exercises that will help build muscle and muscle mass to overcome skinny fat so that you can, you know, it, if you're someone like me who is a body type four, was a body type four, I'm now a weak body type two, you, it is possible to change your actual body type. But first, please, first, please accept your scientific body type for what it is. Understand that it is gen genetics and that there is a certain diet, exercise, and lifestyle science-based that is best for your specific body type. Once you figure that out, once you can take care of your specific body type relative to a science-based diet, exercise, and lifestyle so that you can be healthy in the short and long term, then and only then do we recommend that you start looking at how can I make my body type better? Right, right. Now, um, um, Mark, in your earlier discussion, you mentioned that um, most of the pictures we see online and social media, some of them are fake, you know, they're, they're not uh, true. But in some instances, instances that they are true, they're the true um, body types that we see on social media. Uh, is it really what the effort, right? Trying to just be like another person. I think we are misplacing our identity, right? You and sabotaging our true identity in this regard. And as you also said, it's very important for us to accept ourselves. That's the first thing, first step to take. If you don't accept yourself, who will? Right. Yes. And for yes. that insight. Sure. So, uh, Mark, uh, Going forward, a research that was published in um, Evolution and Human Behavior, it, it was suggested that uh, women who have an hourglass shape, they are most likely to get pregnant, easily have uncomplicated deliveries, and produce a type of fat that which nourishes the baby's spread. Right now, doesn't mean that every woman, right, because of this, every woman out on the streets begin to target for this kind of shape. Uh, what do you think or what is your view on this? Because I believe that, you know, when it comes to the media, when it comes to uh, social media and um, blah, 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 perception is greater than reality. And that is, and it's really driving us, right, um, to the wrong um, aspect, right? Making us do what we're not supposed to do. How can we address this? Yeah, that is definitely... A, a another main concern of ours. So, uh, you know, as they say, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And so, and that really is true. I mean, there are, there are folks up on social media who some of them will say, I find that body type attractive and others will say, I don't. And that's fine. That's the beauty of being human. We all see things our own way. And if you find one body type uh, attractive and another not so much, then that's your own personal preference. So we accept that. So just, so I would say simply accept the fact that we are all different and we all have our own preferences and that some of us 
appreciate a certain body type and some of us appreciate another type of body type. Um, that being said, in terms of the evolution of the human body, science can find no evolutionary purpose for skinny fat. So if you think about when we were, you know, um, hunter gatherers out on the out on the open plains, um, if we were in a hunting party and we were uh, again out on the open plains and we ran across a pack of lions, the way that we would get away because it's not like we like they're going to stand and fight a pack of lions, we would run. So again, science can find no evolutionary purpose for skinny fat because muscle and muscle mass is what gives us speed and strength and agility and athleticism in general. And the person who most likely would get eaten in the lion scenario is the slowest person. Who would the slowest person be? It would be the person with the most skinny fat or fat on their body. Because again, muscle is what is the armor of the human body. It is what gives us athleticism, speed, yada, yada. And the less that we have and, and the more skinny fat that we have, the slower that we are. It's, it's, it's the same reason why in the Olympics, you see somebody like Usain Bolt, who's a human lightning bolt, who you know, is super fast, why you would never see a body type two in that race win. Because they just have too much skinny fat and fat on their body. And we're talking about milliseconds in terms of who wins that race. And the reason that somebody like Usain Bolt wins that race is because that dude is all muscle. So in terms of the evolution of the human body, again, there is no scientific reason why we have skinny fat on our body. That is something that seems to be more recent uh, as we have modernized and become more sedentary. Skinny fat seems to be something that has come along with our more sedentary, lazy lifestyle. Um, and again, it negatively affects many things, including uh, how we see the human body in terms of beauty. Now, in terms of, um, in terms of childbirth, I would say that there's definitely issues there too. Uh, I'm not a doctor, so I can't tell you, you know, are there more cases of cesarean section in terms of giving birth for women who have more skinny fat and fat on their body? That would be a very interesting scientific question to actually look at and see. Um, but what it all really boils down to is, is that every human body is different. It's about understanding why scientifically it, everybody is the shape that it is relative to muscle and muscle mass uh, versus skinny fat. And then just accepting that as it actually is and understanding that beauty really is in the eye of the beholder uh, and we're all different. So yeah, I'll sort of pause there and see if I'm making any sense. Uh, great, you sure are. Thank you, Mark Nelson, once again for your expertise and your profound insight talking about body types, right? You focus on nutrition, exercise, diet, right? Really been a worthwhile avenue on the show today. Do you have any projects you're working on? We are actually looking at starting our own podcast. Um, we are looking at a few different avenues. Yeah, because I, I really do like doing these shows. Uh, but as you know, it's a lot of work. So getting it all set up and such is not easy. Um, but so uh, that, and then uh, um, we are up on social media, like, most other folks. Um, again, you can go to our, our website at fellowone.com. Please take our scientific biotype quiz so that you can learn your specific biotype. Uh, you can use our scientific weight loss um, program diary. And we are not in competition with uh, my, my fitness pal, Calorie King, uh, Apple app, um, the Apple Health app, or the like. All those things work wonderfully in harmony with our scientific uh, weight loss diary. The idea of our scientific weight loss diary is so that you can hold yourself accountable. It's right there on your phone. You can see it. You can share your, your journey with your family and friends. They can join with a free subscriber account, join the conversation, encourage you. You can invite your fitness 
uh, pro, your dietitian, whoever, and you can see everything right there on your profile page. We respect your privacy, so you can use a pin name. None of our images require a face, so you can maintain your privacy and security. And we moderate every comment on the site because we will not tolerate trolling, hating, shaming, or bullying of any type. But the idea, again, of the diary is to hold yourself accountable. And um, the, the, the last thing that I'll say about that is, is we focus on the science always. The, the, the most current science, excuse me, says that a low carb diet is the way to go. So for, for many years, weight loss was looked at in terms of the calorie in calorie out model that a calorie is, is a calorie and that it doesn't matter what you eat so long as you keep your calories at or below your, your daily BMR. The science is now clear. A calorie most certainly is not a calorie. The value of your food quality matters, right? So if you eat a McDonald's, a McDonald's French fry, it is not the same calorie value as a piece of broccoli. So the food quality that you eat matters relative to the glycemic index and you want the glycemic index to be low and you want to keep your carbs low if you're trying to lose weight. Don't do a calorie reduction. Eat the number of calories daily relative to your actual BMR. Um, keeping in mind that if you have skinny fat on your body, you'll need to adjust for that and our scientific biotype quiz makes that adjustment for you. But the idea is, is that if you are giving your body less carbs, you're forcing your body to burn fat. You are forcing your, your body to increase its metabolic rate by adding in exercise. And you want to do steady state, medium intensity exercise, like daily walking for 45 minutes to 1.5 hours daily. And in the short term, that's six to seven days per week cardio. And you can do hiking or jogging or running. We have all this up on, on our, our website under the scientific weight loss uh, product. You can see all the times that, that we recommend, yada, yada. But the idea is, is don't starve your body. When you starve your body, you force it to slow down the actual metabolism, which is not what you want. You force it to hoard calories in, in terms of fat. Um, as it goes into survival mode. So a low carb diet, and the beauty of a, of a low carb diet is that you can do it with pretty much any diet. And again, all this is, is up on our site. We have it broken down very well, uh, but a low carb diet and medium um, intensity, steady state cardio. And of course you would want to add in weightlifting if you can, but here's a fact. Um, the human body will always burn fat and calories consumed first. It does not burn muscle and muscle mass. We had one participant who did great. She lost the weight, um, is participant 1170 up on her site. She did great, she lost all of the weight. She got down to her mid-range BMI, yet she still had skinny fat all over her body where she should have muscle and, and muscle mass. As we forecasted relative to her bi type quiz, and Instead of realizing that it was her ge genetics and that she was just lacking muscle, muscle mass because that was her genetic makeup, her first thought was, well, I must have lost muscle and muscle mass when I was losing weight. But she, all of her scientific evidence shows that she lost weight safely. And there is no scientific evidence that the human body under the age of 40 burns muscle and muscle mass during, during weight loss. And we challenge any of your listeners to send us scientific studies that show that the human body burns muscle and muscle mass under the age of 40 during weight loss. And we're talking about default muscle and muscle mass, not if you are obese and your body had to build poor quality muscle and muscle mass to help carry all that fat weight. And then once you lost all that fat weight, you also lost that extra poor quality muscle and muscle mass. No, that is not default muscle mass. So I will say again, the human body does not burn muscle and muscle mass 
during. Right. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mark Nelson, for that. I wish you best of luck in your project and your future endeavors. Any social? Thank you very much. And those you like to share with my audience. Um, you can find us up on social media, but otherwise, thank you so much for having me on the show. All right. It's a pleasure having Mark Nelson on the show. Like to catch up with any missed episodes of Live We Are Lived by Mobile Steven. You can get to any cross promotion platforms to bump into online, right? And um, type in Live We Are Lived by Mobile Steven. There you go to have a worthwhile listening experience as you do so. Perhaps you'd like to be a guest on the show. You can mail me at mobilesteven.o at outlook.com. Now I'll be looking forward to your mail. Let's get to discussion started. With all my love, I talk to you. Bye for now.